All right, boys, most of you know me from betting on MMA, and most of you know me from having six-figure days on MMA, right? I've had wins on one single MMA event of over $100,000. But it wasn't always like that, right? I was a broke gambler for many, many years. I lost the majority of my bets for many, many years. And today I want to tell you a story, one of my origin stories on how I started gambling. And I want to give you a story on a little trick that we did, a little con that I did in London to earn a lot of money from gambling when I had no idea what I was doing. All right, so I was probably about 16, 17 years old when I used to do this. You can't go in the betting shops in London under 18, but I used to have fake ID. I used to know some of the people who worked in the betting shops, so they let me in. And we just used to kind of try our luck. We used to go in betting shops and hopefully they didn't kick us out. They didn't ask us for ID. Sometimes we got away with it, sometimes we didn't. So basically guys, there was many, many times where I was able to go into betting shops underage. So I was probably like 16, 17 years of age. And me and my friend found out this hack to make tons of money from the betting shops. And when I say betting shop, for all the American people listening to me, you might not know what I'm talking about. In the UK, we have brick and mortar betting shops. So a literal building, which is a bookie, and you go in it and you can place bets, right? You don't really have that in America too much. Yeah, in Vegas, you have casinos and stuff and some sports books. But in England, we have that all over every single area in England, right? And so me and my friend, used to go in these betting shops at 16, 17 years of age, and we used to bet on Greyhound races, right? So in Greyhound racing, you have six dogs, and each dog has a number attached to the dog, right? They have like, like, like a jacket on, and the jacket is a different color for each dog, and on each jacket has a number numbered one to six. And that basically helps you tell the dogs apart, right? So if you bet on the number two dog, you don't have to know exactly what the dog looks like. You just look at the dog racing with a, a number two patched jacket on, right? So what me and my friend used to do is we used to bet on the number two dog. And we also used to bet on the number four dog in the exact same bet. I explained to you what I mean by that. So when you place a bet in these bookmakers, you have to draw the number of the dog on a piece of paper, right? Or you have to write the dog's name on a piece of paper. And it's a betting slip, right? On a betting slip. And you have to also write the stake. So you have to write how much you want to put on the dog. Five pounds, 10 pounds, whatever it may be, right? And what we used to do was write the number two, saying we're betting on the dog that is the number two dog. But we would also put a little flick on the bottom of the two. So if you can imagine a two, the number two in your head right now, right? On the bottom of the two, it has like a straight line, right? Like that. That's the bottom of the number, right? So what we used to do was draw a little line underneath or like going through the bottom of the number two, right? But it's a very faint line. You couldn't see it that much, but it was there, right? So now the number two turns into a number four. If you can imagine a number two and then you just put a line down there, it looks like a number four. Now, of course, it doesn't look exactly like a number four, but it could pass for a number four, right? If I showed it to you and said, that's a number four, you might say you got shit handwriting, but you would believe that it was a number four, right? So now what essentially what we are doing is we're betting on the number two dog and the number four dog, but only in one bet. So then we used to go up to the betting counter, give them the slip. We put 10 pound on it, 20 pound on it, where, whatever it was. And about 50% of the time, they would look at the slip and they just allow it. They put it through the little photocopy machine, give us our copy of it. And then we go back and we watch the race, right? And if two, if the number two dog won, then we go back up to the counter to collect our money. Hey, we've won with number two, right? We written, we written number two. And if the number four dog won, we do the exact same thing. We'd go up to the counter and say, yeah, the number four dog won. Here's our winning bet slip. Now about 80% of the time, they would look at it, especially if it was the number four dog, and they'd question it. They'd say, this isn't number four, this is a number two. Or they'd say like, are you sure this is a number two? This looks like a number four, right? Because it was ambiguous. And that's what we was trying to do. And we'd have to argue with them. Like 20% of the time, they just accept it, right? But more often than not, they would say to us like, 
I don't know about this. Like, are you sure this is the correct bet? And I'd have to argue with them. Me and my mate would have to argue with them. Like, no, this is the bet. Give me my money. Like, you need to pay me out. And basically 100% of the time after the argument, they would pay you out. There was a few times when they didn't pay us out and they refused. We got into a big argument and stuff, but we knew we was doing wrong. So I didn't want to push the argument too much. But most of the time they would just pay us out. So essentially we're betting on two dogs with one bet slip. So this was a great hack that we used all over London in many, many betting shops. It got us banned from betting shops. And basically every time they paid us out, they would say, look, we'll pay you out this time, but we ain't doing this again. Like next time you come, you have to clarify what dog you want. So we could only really use it once. As I said, there's a few times I just accepted it, but we could only really use this hack once per betting shop, per person, and really per staff member. Because we used to go to the betting shops and if there was a new staff member working, we'd be like, all right, we'll use the exact same hack again. And I guess they didn't really speak, even though they should have. So this was a hack that I used way before I was profitable to make me profitable. I don't mind speaking about it now because it was like eight, nine years ago. And yes, I guess it was illegal, whatever you want to call it, but I'm in a different country now. I'm living a beautiful life right now as you can see i don't know if you can see that right now but you know i've got a pool behind me i'm chilling right now so i don't really think the bookmakers in the uk are going to come for me but that was a little hack i ain't putting this out there to endorse anybody doing this i'm just thinking about this now i don't want anybody watching this video to go and do this it's probably probably hard to do it these days man like the bookmakers in the uk They've cracked down massively on a lot of this type of stuff because there wasn't just me doing it. There was other people doing similar stuff to, like this. But we rinsed London, man. London got smashed. I had hundreds of pounds from this when I was like 16 years old. So yeah, it's just a little story about my origin of gambling. But we don't need to do that anymore. We don't need to do that because now we're earning $100,000 per day on some UFC events. So yeah, it's humble beginnings. And um, yeah, man, it's just a little story about my gambling.